Dear Kathy from Krakow, you asked for clarification. You said I'm enigmatic, and I know that's true. It's hard to understand what I'm saying exactly. Vladimir Putin dropped a political bombshell today, announcing his intention to move from being Russian president to prime minister. Putin is banned from seeking a third term as president in next year's election, and many observers say today's announcements show he's now found a way around that restriction, predicting that if elected prime minister, he would move to centralize power in his new position instead. On Saturday, Putin and President Bush gave a joint news conference that highlighted their differences over Israel's actions in Lebanon, the state of Russian democracy, and Iraq. Here's an excerpt of that news conference. President Bush, you said that you plan to raise in a respectful way your concerns about Russian democracy with President Putin. How did that conversation go? And I know you've already talked a lot about the U.S.-Russian relationship, but I'm wondering if both of you could elaborate on that and how the differences of opinion over the democracy issue are affecting the relationship. Uh, I, thought, I thought the discussion was a good discussion. It's not the first time that Vladimir and I discussed our uh, governing philosophies. I have shared with him uh, my desires for uh, our country, and he shared with me his desires for his. And I talked about uh, my desire to promote uh, institutional change in parts of the world, uh, like Iraq, where, where there's a free press and free religion. And, and uh, I told him that a lot of people in our country you know, we hope that Russia would do the same thing. I fully understand, however, that there will be a Russian-style democracy. We certainly would not want to have the same kind of democracy as they have in Iraq. I will tell you quite honestly. I looked into Putin's eyes and I see three letters, a K, a G, and a B. He's an old KGB apparatchik surrounded by his buddies who were in the KGB. And he's not going to restore the power and prestige of the Soviet Union, but he is trying to restore the Russian Empire. Through my efforts as a 9-11 conspiracy debunker, as I pointed out in the video last week, I became aware of a network which I believe is composed largely of non-U.S. citizens, largely of non-U.S. citizens. This network seeks to secretly influence U.S. policy by injecting disinformation into the minds of unsuspecting Americans through an ongoing and persistent covert campaign working to achieve long-range goals. This network is actually a loose, cooperative alliance of diverse groups with similar interests, but the leadership of this black network is composed of intellectuals with connections to governments and to academia and only they have a clear picture of the actual structure and function of this semi-autonomous network. The leaders are well-trained and well-funded. They are experienced. They have been doing this for decades. This network doesn't just mess with the minds of kids on the Internet. It messes with the minds of presidents. It affects the decisions made in the boardrooms of major corporations. It actually has the power to kill. It can elect a U.S. senator, or it can depose him. It has the power to choose tomorrow's headlines. And the only thing standing in the way of this monstrous network is the people of the United States.